What's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will from the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel online at www.whatsupinthesky.com. I want to thank all you guys who are out there posting and uh, come and visit the website every day. I had an old credit card on there. It was down for a day and a half. I think I got 50 messages from you guys. So there is an awful lot of you guys checking out the forums each day. A lot of people, you know, sitting on the fence and just watching. The articles are always great. We got some good people out there. But we got a good Martian mystery going on. My last video talked about the Martian plume on Mars. We went on uh, Hoagland that night and talked about it. And even to this day, like uh, Bradenburg, Dr. Bradenburg was on there. The guy who said they were, you know, put out a paper saying that there was a, a nuclear explosion, two of them possibly on Mars at one time in the past. But right now we've got a total mystery going on. It's not a mystery to the people in charge or whatever, our, our science masters of the world. But something's up. There's been a cloud on Mars, they're saying, more than the Live Science article that just came out. It's been there for almost three months now. First off, you can see it here, where we got going on right here. I'm going to zoom that in for you. Boom. This is right from the Flickr site. This is a webcam, basically, that's on one of the ESA's, European Space Agency's, Satellites, they're just rolling around it. It's acquired. This was acquired on the 24th of November. Today's the 25th. So uh, this is on Mars Express. They basically have a webcam out there, and it's pretty neat. It takes pictures as it goes around. Here's the plume that day. Okay, this is yesterday's. Today's the 25th. There's the 24th. This thing started back in uh, September. Okay, here is the 11th. You can still see it there. Oops, let me go back. What did I just do? Oh, boom. Boom, boom, there it is. And you can watch it come across, see how it comes there. Now, like I said, this was the, what's the same one? This was the 19th of November. Here we have it on the, what is this? The 6th of November. Look at this thing. It's 950 miles long is what the next article is going to say. And they're not calling it an eruption. It's coming from one of the dormant volcanoes, the corner of it. Something is outgassing from there. It's amazing what they're going to call it in the next thing. First the live, first when it came out, space.com, see, where we go. Space.com, when it came out, and said, there's a strange cloud on Mars right now, and it's just hanging around. Well, we, we discussed this on the Hoagland show that night. I might put some of that up or not. I'm going to show you some of the pictures we went over there just to prove that they're they're full of it. And this cloud has there's basically a, a triangle spot on Mars. It's got a bunch of old dormant volcanoes there. 50 million years old, they say. No no volcanic. No, it's it just it's only there by coincidence. You know what I mean? And it happens to point us to. Uh, where it is, that this time of year, the cloud is full of water ice, the agency continued, creating an airflow along the side of a volcano. This means in the future what scientists call an organic or lee cloud. It also happens to mean that the clouds could change over the course of days as atmospheric pressure changes on Mars. Okay, here is the scientists watching the cloud have noted that it grows over the course of the morning, stretches along the equator, and it may be affected by the dust still in the atmosphere from the dust storm earlier this year. Okay, so come on, guys. Now, they also said in this one that the cloud has remained in place over the mountain called Erisius Mountain near the Martian equator since September 13th. So September 13th. Um, but it's just there by coincidence, total coincidence, here are the three right here. Basically, actually, there's four if you put in Olympus. It's funny when you go check these out, the esoteric meaning behind what everything's uh, been named up there, but we're not going to go into that. We're just going to look. This this is absolutely some sort of uh, some sort of mystery. Uh, to me, it's out it's outgassing. It's some sort of eruption. Something's coming from under the surface up here and coming up. Into, this is this is my personal, you know. Um, this is my, that's what I'm saying. I see what I see, you see what you see. If you go look at some pictures of what eruptions look like or outgassing looks like here, something coming out and into the atmosphere, um, you're going to see the same stuff. So it's, it's, let me just read this one more time. 
The spacecraft called Martin Express is the predecessors have spotted similar clouds in the last three previous occasions. On those structures formed around the same time in the Martian year, and that's not a coincidence. The cloud is full of water ice, the agency continued, created by the airflow along the side of a volcano. This means that the feature is what scientists call an orographic or leak cloud. That happens to mean that the cloud changes over the course of the day as atmospheric patterns on Mars change. Now we all know there's clouds on Mars, there's plenty of videos, we've done it before, I've done it before, but this is just getting to be a joke. Live science is the only people who have touched this. This was from November 21st, and it, you would think that after this long and they're even calling it a mystery, but wait, they, they come get some guy. Even the name of the scientist just is, is, is funny. So a mysterious white cloud, I know you guys can read, but I'm going to read this for you. A mysterious white cloud colored plume extending about 950 miles has been spotted in the leeward side of the Arison Mountain volcano on Mars. Unlike the Martian cloud structures, this seems to be poof in and out of existence. This one has staying power, with the le lengthy plume hovering over the Arisu Mountain Amon since September 13th. This scene as recently as November 12th, or we're going to say as recently as November 24th, according to the ESA, the agency's Mars Express camera, blah, blah, blah. All right, here we go. Montane clouds are very common on Mars, but it was the length of the cloud and its duration that's making it interesting, <laughs> says Francis Fourier. His name is Forget. Scientist name Forget. <laughs> okay. A senior research scientist at the National Center for Scientific Research in Paris. So, live science goes to them for it. They're not going to NASA, ESA to get these, these see what's going on. So, Forget and his colleagues could rule out volcanic spewing as the cause of the cloud. The volcano has been active, inactive for at least 10 million years, and its peak activity occurred even longer ago, about 150 million years ago. I love, I love to know how they know this stuff, you know, considering we barely understand what's going on here on Earth in many reasons, uh, many instances. All right, so... Arsimans is the southernmost volcano of the group of three ancient volcanoes located on the elevated plateau known as Tharsis region of Mars. So, here is a picture from the high-resolution stereo camera. You can see something coming out. It's definitely uh, outgassing something. It's coming from right about here. Uh, the development of the plume, called an organ, the Lee Cloud, is due to a combination of factors that are common in mountainous regions on Mars and even Earth. Dust and cooler air are the main ingredients. The images of the plume were taken after a global dust storm had finally subsided on Mars. While the dust storm occurs, sometimes they develop into global storms that happen yearly, or happens this year. The dust storms create darkened conditions that reduce the heat at the planet's surface and increase absorption of the solar radiation and heating by the dust particles in the high atmosphere. Forget says they just want to forget this whole thing, just like a tropical air on Earth, where this unusually warm air encounters the topographic features such as a mountain or ancient volcano. The disturbance as an air parcels is created as is forced upward over the volcano and to an even higher elevation. At higher elevations, the air temperatures are cooler and the atmosphere is thinner. When the air cools to its dew point, the water condenses and water ice clouds form. So this is supposedly water ice that's here. Okay. Given the condition, the ice particles do not sublimate, transition directly from ice to water vapor. As a result, the cloud transport water ice in a long way, constantly being renewed by the wind, Forget says. He added that the plume on Mars is similar to varying duration of contrails from airplanes. Okay. These exhaust trails from airplanes are also rich in water vapor. If the air is cold and humid, the exhaust condenses and may freeze, similar to what happens with the warm, humid Martian air when it hits these higher topographical features. As for why the Martian plume is so long-lasting, Forget suggests it has something to do with the high humidity and more humid the air, the more likely that the Lee Cloud can renew itself of the waves of air such as long distance the leeward side of the volcano. We can speculate that before we encountering the volcano, the air was super saturated with water vapor so that one condensed the water ice cannot sublimate, which once again is turning from ice into water, water vapor. 
The fact that the same formations did not replicate themselves farther north to other volcanoes may be an indication that the northern hemisphere is just starting its winter solstice, and this is typically a more cloud-free period, forget said. The southern hemisphere, where the RSS Mons is located, is just starting its summer. Okay, now let's go back to the other one where they say that it starts this time of year. Well, Keith Laney totally blew this out of water. Here we go. We went back and looked to see when we had this. This is... 7209. Okay, three months later, or this you know, time of year. And remember that Mars pretty much has the same same type of seasons we have. Has the same. I get. I think it's 24 hours and a, 30 minutes as their day. It's a very similar planet to ours. This was on 32111. You can obviously see it up here. And if you just take the dates off and you just look at this, you can see that it's happened all throughout the year. So that basically debunks the first, yeah, you know, science.com article, or so, yeah, what, or space.com article. So we have it in October here. We have it in December. We have it in March. And then we have it in June or July. Yeah, July. Come on. So basically that that's, it's not what time of year it is. It's not affecting this thing. And here is the day that it was in question when the stuff first came out. This very long, same exact time, same day, same planet, different agendas. This was September 24th, 2018. Here's the same area. You can see the three three main ones with the fourth one there. And look, you don't see the long plume coming out of NASA's. So why does NASA's image not show this? Why does the ESA one show that? That's up for you to take a look and, and see. But... When you go ahead and do a search for, the, you know, basically, you would think after every day that passes, there would be more and more and more and more articles about this. But no, there's not. Live Science is the only one that's taken a crack at it. I would think Space.com would have more articles about this every day. But look at these things. I mean, to me, it's definitely some sort of outgassing from the planet. This is not like a contrail type thing going on in the upper atmosphere. Uh, something is renewing it from this area. Something is absolutely renewing it. And it's a mystery. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I said here it is right here is an image from the uh, their high resolution cameras as it's coming out. Somewhere in this area, something's coming out from it. Bradenburg, Dr. Bradenburg on the uh, you know on the on the Hoagland show said absolutely some sort of eruption, something going on there, it's something is outgassing, which leads us to say there is, Mars isn't a dead planet, and we've known this, Let's see, they have clouds there, and the more and more that we act like it's a cold, dead planet in, in our science and teach people that, um, it's going to be harder to wake up to this. Now, NASA has a new satellite going there now, which is called the InSight, it's going to be landing tomorrow, and if you get this tonight, you can tomorrow you can actually watch it. They say they're going to somehow broadcast it live. We'll find out and see. Of course, we're due a loss. The uh, hopefully it's not us. They also announced Curiosity rover two. The uh, 2020 rover is going to be doing to uh, let's see. This has the Desero crater is where it's going to be going. This is the area where it's going to land, which just so happens in this area to see some small clouds and kind of stuff like you see over there where we're just taking a look at. Um, so wondering if it's that's the, that's when we're going to find out that, hey, look what we found, um, not the insight. And insight's the same type thing too. Insight's going to be an interesting thing. I, I'll, I'll read this to you a little bit about what it is, and then uh, I'll let you guys go. But I want you to let me know what you guys think this is. NASA's Mars Interior Exploration Using Seismic Investigations. This InSight lander is scheduled to touch down on the red planet at approximately 3 p.m. Eastern Time on November 26, and the viewers everywhere can watch coverage of the event live at the NASA television, the, agenda, the agency's website, and social media platforms. It was launched on May 5th. InSight marks NASA's first Mars landing since Curiosity. The landing will kick off a two-year mission when InSight will become the first spacecraft to study the deep interior. Its interior. The data will also help scientists understand the formation of the rocky worlds, including our own. InSight is to be followed by Mars by too many spacecraft, comparing 
compromising of NASA's MARB Q1 and the deep space mission for CubeSats. On Marco, that marks the plan flyby. So it'll attempt to relay data from InSight as it enters the planet's atmosphere and lands. So I guess that's how we're going to be seeing it live. Hopefully we can see it, because this mission is going to be checking out basically a lot of uh, seismic data and things like that. It's going to be trying to figure it out, even though it's a dead planet. Maybe this is going to be how they start telling us, but something's got to give here. So you don't have this type of phenomenon just going on. I can see it was going on for a couple of days, like back here, you know. I can see if they told us it's, you know, live science is saying, oh, it's because it's, a, you know, it's turning into the summary time in that part of the, uh, you know, part of the planet. But the dates don't matter. The months don't matter. I mean, Keith Laney right here showed us that. And all you had to do was go back through the Flickr albums. I mean, S has done a great job by just posting these these pictures. And if you go to this, I'll leave this link down in the thing. You can check it all out yourself. Um, it gets longer, it gets shorter, whatever it is, it's definitely being renewed by something. So, much love to you all. I still have a million Curiosity rovers to get pictures to go to. We're going to be getting back to that here soon, but this thing has really been getting on my mind. It's been on my mind, and I've just been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for it to turn off. You know, so something's happened up there. Um, maybe it's the kickoff of its own terraforming, who knows, but... This right here is not a normal activity. It's not, it doesn't seem like a normal cloud to me. I would love your suggestions down in the comments. Miss talking to you all. Website, come on over and join it. Much love to you, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Night, whenever it is when you guys watch this. I also had a bunch of other stuff I want to get to um, about Elon Musk and things like that, which we're going to get to in another video. He naming his uh, his big Falcon rocket, the new name ship Starship. I mean, this guy's really pushing the limits. And his he uh, sat down with Joe Rogan and had a puff of a of a marijuana and a tobacco cigarette. And now the space agencies and Boeing, the two companies partner, will undergo an assessment. I swear, this guy. And maybe it has to do with the fact that his new uh, Roadster is going to be going from 0 to 60 in 1.6 seconds at a top speed of 260 miles per hour with a $620 mile or 620 mile range, 620 mile range for an electric car. Seems like the government is coming after this guy full force. No matter what, he can't do anything right. But that's for another time. We'll talk about that. Where is everybody on this? How come we don't have, you know, you would think there would be press, everything all over here. I mean, three months, three months this thing's been going off. But All right, guys, the studio set up pretty much. I got my music stuff going here. I, you can see I brought in my uh, all my posters around here from the garage that I had. So I'm going to be able to make videos, make music, do my work. And uh, not be doing it for my bedroom. So there won't be any fire uh, plays videos, fireside chats. Unless we do some fireside chats by it, maybe we'll do that. But all right, guys. Thank you for sticking with me. Much love to you. Have yourself a wonderful one.